Hello, everybody. Kristen Jack Boney here. Welcome to More Than 200 OK, How to Do Negative Testing on APIs. Unfortunately, I can't be here with you today as you're watching this recording. I am at a wedding this weekend. So if you have any questions for me, feel free to contact me through LinkedIn or through my website. OK, let's get started. So why should you know how to test APIs? Well, first of all, because most software companies use APIs to interact with the data stores of their application. So because of that, software companies are going to expect that you, the tester, will be able to completely test their APIs. But a lot of people don't know that running a request and getting a 200 response code is not completely testing an API. There are all kinds of other things that you can do to test APIs. So what can happen if an API isn't tested properly? Well, a malicious user could exploit a security vulnerability. Bad data could get into the database. An end user could be confused when their information isn't saved properly, or the application could crash or slow down. So now that we know why we should be testing APIs, we're gonna take a look at our test application, which you can find at Thinking Tester contact list herokuapp.com. So this is a website that has an underlying API data store that you can use to practice API testing and see how your API calls result in changes um, in the UI or vice versa. So let's take a look in Postman at some of the requests we have for the test application. So these are a couple of our happy path requests. So first of all, we can add a contact to a contact list. Um, so we've got a post request here. Here's the URL of our website and here's our contact endpoint. Here's the user that we, or excuse me, the contact that we want to add. And then we're gonna validate that when we add the contact, we're gonna get a 201 in response. That's a response that means the contact was created. And then we're going to set our contact ID as an environment variable for the next request. So let's take a look at that. We can see that we ran the request and that the new contact was added. It came with an ID. Um, our test passed. We got our status code of 201. And then we also saved our ID as a variable for the next request. So our next happy path request is get contact. So we're gonna try and retrieve the contact that we just added. So this is a get request. Here's our URL. Here's our contacts endpoint. And here's our contact ID that we're passing in. This is what we just saved. So um, we are expecting that we're gonna get a 200 in response and that the contact's gonna be returned and it's gonna have the correct first and last name. So let's see how that works. Yep, we get our contact in response and there's the first and last name and we get our 200 OK in response. So that all looks good. So those are our happy path requests. Now that we understand how those work, now we can start looking at some negative tests. So let's go back to our slideshow. So what kinds of negative tests can we run in APIs? Well, we can run response code tests, which means if something goes wrong that we're checking to, that, to make sure that we're getting the appropriate response code. We can run security tests, meaning that only authenticated and authorized users should be able to get the information or add information. Um, and then we can also run input tests, meaning that we can't input incorrect information, invalid information. We get an appropriate response if we try to do that. So let's start with negative response code tests. So here are some of the things that you could test. You could test that a request that is incorrectly formatted or has bad data returns a 400. Um, and you would want to make sure that you're not getting a 500 response. 500 responses should be reserved just for server problems, like the server's down. You're going to want to validate on a 400. Um, you could test that a request without an authentication token returned a 401. Or you could test that a request for a resource that the user doesn't have permission for returns a 403 or a 404. So now that we have those ideas, let's take a look at another Postman request. 
So here's our first negative test. So we're going to do a get request. We're going to try to get a contact just like we did before with our happy path. But this time we're going to try to get a contact that doesn't exist. So we're going to want to assert that we get a 404 in response. Let's see what happens. Yep, we get a 404 not found in response. So our test passes. Okay, let's go back to the slideshow. And let's take a look at API security. So many API requests require an authentication token to prove that the requester should be allowed access. So you can think of that as just like being logged in when you're trying to interact with a website. You're not logged in, you're not supposed to be able to get anything. Some requests also require API keys, which identify which application is making the request. And if you don't have the appropriate API key, you shouldn't be able to get data in response. And then even if the requester has a token and an API key, they still might not have permission to view a resource. For example, if I'm logged in as myself, I should be able to see my own contacts, but I shouldn't be able to ask for your contacts. Okay, so here are some ideas for negative security tests. So no authentication token. You should get a 401 in response. Or invalid or expired auth token, you should get a 401. Missing or invalid API key, that would be either a 401 or a 403 response. And then finally, user does not have access to the resource. You could get a 403 or a 404 for that response. So let's take a look at these in Postman. So here's our first security test. So in this security test, we're trying to do a post. We're trying to add a new contact. But here in our headers, I'm not passing in the authorization token. You can see the checkbox is unchecked. So when we make this request to Postman, we're not sending in that authorization token. So we are expecting that we're going to get a 401 in response that we're not authenticated. Let's see what happens. Yes, that's exactly what happens. There's our 401 unauthorized. Okay, let's take a look at bad token. So same thing, we're trying to do a post, adding a new contact. But here in the headers, you can see we're passing in a token of foo. Well, we know that's not gonna work. That's not a valid token. So we are expecting in our test that we're gonna get a 401 in response. And that's what we get. And finally, here's a situation where I've created two users, user one and user two. And then for each of those two users, I created a contact. So user one created contact one, user two created contact two. And now what I am doing in this test is I am passing in the token for user two, and then I'm going, but I'm trying to ask for the contact that user one created. And I'm not gonna have permission to get that. So I'm going to expect that I get a 404 in response. Now you might be wondering why a 404? Is it 404 for not found? Yes, it is. And usually when you make a request like this where you don't have permission to see somebody else's uh, contact, you would get a 403 in response, which basically means, sure, you're authenticated, but you don't have permission to see this resource. But what I chose to do in my application was return a 404 because I didn't even want to let a malicious user know that the resource existed. So rather than saying, yes, it exists, but you can't get to it, so maybe you should try harder to try and get to it, I'm saying, oh, nope, doesn't even exist at all, nothing to see here. So let's see if we get our 404 response, and we do. All right, let's return to our slides. Let's talk about input testing. So here's why input testing is so important. It's because the rules that apply to the UI should match the rules that apply to the API. So some examples here of rules we're talking about are things like field type, character length, numeric value, field format, such as phone number. When rules do not match between the UI and the API, bad data can get into the database. For example, if there's a UI rule that says, um, let's say you can't put in a badly formatted phone number, but the API doesn't have that rule, then someone who's just making a direct API call could get bad data into the database. 
But then when rules do not match between the API and the UI, the user's input can fail without an appropriate error message. So for example, if you had a user who was um, putting in a, um, uh, uh, last name that had too many characters in it, um, which uh, was allowed in the UI, but wasn't allowed in the API, the API might return an error, but that error might not be shown in the UI, and then the user would be confused. Like, why can't I add this new contact? I don't understand. I'm not getting any kind of error. And then finally, when validation rules are not enforced by the API, malicious users can circumvent application controls and maybe get access to information that they shouldn't have. So let's look at some ideas for negative input tests. You could test that you are missing a required field or that you have an invalid input type or you have too many or too few characters. A number might be too high or too low. You might have an invalid format for date or phone number or postal code. So let's take a look at this in Postman. So here's an example of we're passing in a post and we're missing the first name, which happens to be a required field. So we're going to test that we get a 400 in response. And we're also going to test that we get an appropriate error message. And so we do, we get the 400 bad request and we get an appropriate error message, path first name is required. Here's a test where we're passing in a last name that is too long. It is 21 characters and we only allow 20 characters for the last name. So we're going to assert that we get that 400 in response and we're going to assert that we get that last name too long error message. Yep, and that's what we get. Okay, and finally, um, here's a post that we're doing. We've got our required fields and we're also passing in a birth date, but the birth date is not valid. There is no such thing as February 29th, 2021. So we are once again expecting, we're gonna get a 400 in response and we're gonna get a message about the birth date being invalid. And that is what we get. Okay, let's go back to our slideshow. So in conclusion, here are some API test ideas. First of all, you'll want to test that response codes for every happy path request are correct. After you've done that, that's when you start your negative testing. So you wanna test that your response codes for every negative request are correct. You can test that a 401 or a 403 is returned if the required security keys or tokens are missing. You could test that a 403 or 404 is returned if the requesting user does not have access rights. You could validate that an appropriate error message is returned if the data in the request violates the validation rules. And you could test that an appropriate error message is returned if the query parameters, those are the ones that are in the URL, are invalid or not found. And that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed my talk today, you might want to check out my blog, Think Like a Tester, which you can find at thinkingtester.com. I'm also a LinkedIn Learning course author. My course is called Postman Essential Training, so it can teach you all about Postman. And then most importantly, I am the author of The Complete Software Tester, where I talk about API testing, UI testing, all kinds of testing, and that book is available on Amazon. Thanks so much.